Whether you work in a casual or craft bar, this is literally everything you need to know about tequila and mezcal. First things first, who created tequila and mezcal and where are they made? Both tequila and mezcal were created in Mexico. 95% of tequila is made in Jalisco, but they also make it in Michoacan, Nayarit, Tamaulipas, and Guanajuato. 90% of mezcal is made in Oaxaca, but they also make it in Guerrero, Guanajuato, Michoacan, Zacatecas, San Luis Potosi, Tamaulipas, Durango, and Puebla. Both tequila and mezcal are made with the agave plant, so let's learn about it. Agave comes from the succulent family, and there's 270 different species of agave. Roughly 40 of those species are used to make mezcal and tequila. Visually, agave is similar to like a giant aloe plant, but without the spikes. And when I say agave is giant, it's giant. <laughs> agave can grow to 20 feet tall and 10 feet wide. So next to a person, it could look like this. Agave takes seven to 20 years to fully mature. Its water source comes from the rain and you can harvest them all year long. Because of its size, the process of turning agave into a spirit is one of the most difficult and labor intensive of all the spirits to mill. Also because it's done primarily by hand. So what are the main differences between tequila and mezcal? Well, for starters, mezcal is kind of like tequila's big brother. And actually any spirit made with agave is considered mezcal. Tequila is a type of mezcal, but it has more specific determining factors that make it definitively tequila. It has to be made with one specific type of agave, which is gonna be the Blue Weber agave. And its origin point connects specifically to a small town in Jalisco, Mexico called tequila. There's a popular saying that all tequila is mezcal, but not all mezcal is tequila. There are a couple more differences in the process of making mezcal and tequila, but we'll get into that in a little bit. <laughs> How was tequila and mezcal created? So there's this old urban legend that back in ancient Mexico, there was a lonely agave plant in the middle of the desert. Then out of nowhere, a lightning bolt struck the agave plant, cooked the insides of it, and then created a fermented drink. The fermented drink inside was kind of like an agave wine in a sense. Then there was some random person just walking around and noticed the fermented drink and decided to drink it. The ancient Mexicans called this fermented drink poke. And poke was incredibly respected and essentially seen as a gift from the gods in ancient Mexican culture. Fast forward to the Spanish colonizing Mexico. Along with war and smallpox, the Spaniards also brought spirits that came from Europe and over time, they were running low on supply. So the ancient Mexicans gave them pulque, but the Spaniards were more used to like hard liquor like they had in Europe. So the Spaniards ended up allowing some of the ancient Mexicans to start producing and distilling mezcal. It's also possible that the ancient Mexicans already knew how to distill before the Spaniards came, which they possibly could have learned from Filipino sailors, but I'm no historian, so I'm not gonna get too into depth with that. <laughs> so how is tequila and mezcal made? The process of making tequila and mezcal are actually very similar, and it starts by picking the right agave to harvest. The best agave to harvest is roughly seven years old because it has enough sugar content and it's right before it starts flowering. Each agave plant ripens at different times, but skilled workers like humidoras know exactly when to harvest them. When the agave plant is ready to harvest, the humidoras use a tool called a koa to chop off the pencas, which are the leaves, and essentially, they're just trying to get to the main heart of the agave plant called the piña. And it's called piña because it looks kind of like a pineapple. <laughs> Each piña weighs up to 100 kilos. And after all the leaves are chopped off, they'll be loaded on the backs of mules, which will then take it to the trucks, which will then take it to the distillery. <laughs> Once at the distillery, the large piñas are cut into smaller pieces and then they are cooked. With tequila, the piñas are put into large stone, brick or stainless steel above ground ovens and then steam cooked for about three days. With mezcal, piñas are instead put into underground pits called hornos, which are first layered with coal and firewood set on fire and then the piñas are thrown in and covered with dirt and soil and roasted from anywhere in between a couple days and a few weeks. Both processes are essentially turning the agave starches into agave nectar. Then after the piñas are cooked, they cool for a day and in both tequila and mezcal, the piñas are taken to a tejona, which is basically a pit 
where a giant stone wheel pulled by a large animal like a donkey or a mechanical contraption to grind the piñas into agua meal, also called honey water. Then the agua meal and sometimes the shredded piña remnants are taken to an open air fermentation tank for a few days. After that, they go to a grinder to cut up the fibers and to extract the last bits of agua meal. After fermentation, both tequila and mezcal are double distilled and pot stills. Distilling a spirit multiple times essentially increases the proof of the liquor, and later it's cut with water before bottling. And that's the case for a lot of spirits like vodka and whiskey, but on a different spectrum, it's traditional in mezcal to actually distill up to bottling strength which also means you're gonna taste more of the natural and authentic flavors that come from the agave. With that being said, tequila brands can choose whether or not they want to cut their spirit with water. Another thing in distillation, there are some mezcal brands that distill the traditional way using clay pot stills versus using copper pot stills. And if the mezcal does distill with clay pot stills, there will be words of distillado and vado on the label of the bottle. What are the different types of tequila and what do they taste like? Technically, for a spirit to be called tequila, it has to be produced in one of the areas that I listed before, and only 51% of it actually has to be made from agave. However, there are many people in the bar community that only recognize tequila with 100% agave as actual tequila. Tequilas with 51% agave are usually referred to as mixtos, and this is because they're made with agave, but they're also made with other sugars like high fructose corn syrup to try and disguise the impurities of the spirit. Mixos are usually the most inexpensive bottles that you'll see in the tequila section when you go shopping for alcohol. And all I'm gonna say is you should definitely steer away from those because unless you want a hangover the next day, use your hard earned money, especially in this economy, on good quality tequila. And I guarantee you, you will not find that in a bottle that's worth $12. <laughs> but anyway, there are four different types of tequila and the only main difference between them all is how long they do or do not sit in a barrel. First, we have Blanco. Blanco tequila is not aged and is visually clear. Taste-wise, it's lighter, crisp, grassy, and vegetal, and it's best used in bright and citrusy cocktails. Next, we have Reposado. Reposado tequila means rested, and it ages for two months to one year. Visually, the color is darker than Blanco, and taste-wise, it has sweeter notes of vanilla, cinnamon, and agave which are characteristics that come from the barrel. Reposados are very versatile in cocktails because you can use them in both citrusy and spirit forward cocktails. The third type of tequila is called Añejo, which means aged. Añejos are aged for one to three years. Because it spends a longer time in the barrels, it has a deeper, softer, and spicier flavor than a Reposado and a Blanco. Añejos are also more expensive, so it's probably best to sip them neat versus experimenting them in cocktails. And lastly, we have Extra Añejo. Extra Añejo is aged for three or more years, and it's literally the same as Añejo, but it has more flavor and is also more expensive. What are the types of mezcal and what do they taste like? So there are a bunch of different ways you can categorize mezcal. There's also versions of Blanco, Reposado, Añejo, and Extra Añejo in mezcal, but it's most popular to see Blanco mezcal on the shelves as well as in cocktails. More recently, there's been a new way to categorize mezcal, which is artisanal versus ancestral. And the main difference between those two are the materials used to produce the mezcal. Artisanal mezcals are made with the Spanish method, which means a copper pot still. In the process of ancestral mezcal, they'll be using more rural and natural tools, including a clay pot still to distill the mezcal. Taste-wise, each species of agave tastes very different from each other because each species of agave have their own characteristics. The type of soil and climate also has a huge impact on the flavor of mezcal. And because mezcal can be made with a variety of agave, sometimes there will be bottles of mezcal that say ensemble, which means it's a mezcal made up of different varieties of agave. Also, some mezcals are gonna taste more smoky than other mezcals. Usually wild agave will have a less smoky taste. Here are some fun facts about tequila and mezcal. Tequila is actually the national spirit of Mexico. If you ever see a mezcal bottle with an agave worm on the inside, long story short, it's a marketing gimmick from the 1950s to encourage people to drink more mezcal versus tequila. Interesting way to promote it, huh? <laughs> on average, a very skilled humidor can cut up to 150 piñas a day. 
During fermentation, some distillers play classical music to keep the yeast happy and moving. During the Prohibition era, the Tequila Sunrise was the first popular tequila cocktail in the United States. If you see a tequila with a label that says Cristalino, that just means it's an aged tequila with the color filtered out. And lastly, Mezcal was the first indigenous distilled spirit in the Americas. Okay, I know I gave you guys a ton of information just now, but basically if you work in a craft bar, you should know a good amount of all the information in this video. And if you work in a casual bar, you only really need to know about tequila, but it also doesn't hurt to know about both, especially because they are so similar and it'll make you feel a little bit more confident in your knowledge and customers will see the confidence that you have too. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next video in this series. Stay fly!